Well, good evening, everyone. It's a little bit after seven here. I'm George Peters with New England Events. Welcome to our um, ongoing speaker series for New England Events. We have a very special guest tonight, but I'd like to get into some housekeeping issues um, and items. For tonight, we're doing it a little differently. So we'd like everyone to make sure that their uh, cameras are off and their um, audio is off also um, until the end. We would like to invite everybody, please submit your questions into the chat. We wanna to get to as many questions that we can uh, for Lexer and Todd uh, toward the end of the evening, about 7.45, about 7.50 tonight. So please uh, send your questions uh, into the chat and we'll try to get to as many as we can uh, during the course of the evening. I'd like to take um, just a, a heads up, people can see over my shoulder there, different ways that people can enjoy the services that we have here at New England Invents by uh, joining up as a member and also partnering with us as a sponsor. Lexa has done a great job with uh, crafting a, a very fine newsletter that goes out once a month. So please check out our homepage to join as a member or renew, or if the partnership opportunities will bring you right to the Director of Strategic uh, Development, which is Chris Donovan that joins me here this evening. Uh, Chris, thank you for, for being with us tonight. Um, I'd like to introduce our Executive Director, Alexa Gandolfo this evening, which will be conducting the fireside chat with our special guest, Todd Domke. And without further, we're going to get rolling uh, right away here. So, uh, Alexa, uh, take it away, and uh, we'll uh, be checking in with you momentarily. Okay. Thanks so much, George. Um, and thank you, Chris. Um, so happy to be here tonight, and just want to take a moment to introduce our guest, Todd Donkey. Todd is a renowned business strategist and storyteller who helps clients navigate complex challenges and enhance brand identity. With a background as a political analyst and media consultant, Todd brings a very savvy perspective to corporate strategy. He leverages his expertise in communication and planning to help companies, nonprofits, um, and organizations of all sizes. Over his career, he has advised many political campaigns, companies, and nonprofits, developing his ability to evaluate and respond to dynamic situations. He's an author and a ghostwriter. Todd has written for nearly every medium and purpose. And his ability to turn insights and ideas into actionable business priorities and projects, combined with his real talent for storytelling, makes him an invaluable asset to any venture Ventures PR and marketing team. So without saying anything else, we just want to welcome you, Todd, and we're thrilled to have you here as our guest this evening. Thank you. I'm happy to be with you. Absolutely. So let's kick this off. Okay. Um, first question in talking about storytelling as an important asset for all businesses, especially inventors and innovators, is the following. Why is it so effective and important for inventors and innovators to really embrace storytelling? Well, I think first there's the practical need to tell persuasive stories to attract investors, customers, employees, allies, even family and friends. Uh, you're trying to create a product out of an idea, uh, a venture out of a product, so you need to win friends and influence people. And stories help you not just influence, but inspire people to buy into your reality, to believe you are creating a new success story. Uh, second, it's important for inventors and innovators to realize and appreciate that they are part of the greatest story of human progress, the noble history of creating tools and improving tools, broadly understood. Tools took humans out of the trees and caves to hunt and gather, to create farms, villages, cities, uh, to explore the oceans and outer space. So don't let anyone diminish your work 
as merely trying to design a better mousetrap. You are part of a story of ingenuity that transformed the world. Uh, Americans in particular, I think, are deceptive to inventors, innovators, entrepreneurs, because they know uh, our country was revolutionized by inventions and innovation, turning a colony of refugees into the world's greatest superpower. Uh, and because of that inspiring history of ingenuity, you have a receptive audience, uh, people, prospective investors, customers, employees, subcontractors, manufacturers, and other allies know that they profit when you succeed. And with new technologies, new software, economic growth, and its many social benefits uh, will become even more superconductive. So that's why Shark Tank is so popular. Mm -hmm. People find inventors and innovators intriguing. The audience doesn't just want to know the advantages of a new product or service. They want the origin story. What motivated the inventor, innovator, entrepreneur? So inventors of tools should use a tool older than civilization, storytelling. So, I mean, you, you've kind of outlined this, but just to sort of cement this in people's minds, right. what about storytelling is so effective in any form of business communication? Yeah. We're not just talking about inventors and innovators, but any right. business or organization. Right. How, do, how does storytelling help them connect right. with people? Well, while oral storytelling has been in decline through the centuries because of motion pictures, mass media of all kinds, storytelling is more influential than ever. Uh, through videos, online streaming, social media, advertising, PR, marketing, sales, fundraising. So why is it effective? Uh, a story can convey a convincing argument without seeming argumentative. Uh, it is an indirect, entertaining way to reveal your benefits and advantages without coming to market with a salesman. Uh, it reveals reasoning without boasting. It is a friendly way to introduce yourself, a creative way to explain what you're trying to achieve and an engaging way to connect with the self-interest and emotions of the listener. So it's effective uh, because it takes scattered data and logic and makes it all coherent as a pattern of patterns. Uh, and the story makes you, uh, it, it, it's more compelling because we root for people. Yeah. We root for underdogs. We root for a better life. Uh, I remember doing uh, video interviews of refugees who successfully settled in the U.S. Uh, with the assistance of a nonprofit, and I was helping the nonprofit tell their stories. And though English was their second language, they were so eloquent in talking about their earlier persecution, uh, the pride they had in their children graduating from U.S. colleges and going into the U.S. military, and so while I had to edit the video ed interviews to tell the stories more succinctly and to match spoken words with pictures and video clips, their storytelling was effective in ways that no marketing text could be. You felt the pain, the pride, the hopefulness. So a narrative is more effective than just bland talking points because it is more surprising, vivid, memorable. We, we may not remember details, but we recall the gist and we recall how we felt in listening to the story. Uh, I'd say the best stories are about caring, uh, what we care about, what we value, and value is the measure of any new product or venture. So the proof of the storytelling, the power of storytelling, comes to us every day, especially in the internet. Uh, there's the dark side, stories going viral that are not true, disinformation, or they can cripple a business or pr promote a product that doesn't deserve the publicity. 
But the bright side is that stories can help a new product or venture draw free, even global exposure, then in turn helps attract capital, customers, and strategic partners. And it's timeless in that way. It's, it's always been appealing to, to people, stories. That's right. Right around the campfire, right, right in the cave or out, it, it started where people were, would be telling stories in, in very primitive ways. But like the discovery of the, 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 uh, the caves in France about 45,000 years ago, they found uh, that they discovered that the acoustics in the cave corresponded with paintings on cave walls in different places, different kind of acoustics. So it could give the feeling of stampeding animals in one place oh, or something. Or there were people would be playing like drums or there'd be re religious, if there was religious rituals kind of thing. So even then you have something so primal and storytelling runs deep with us. So that that's, it's, it's, I, I mean, that, I think it resonates with everyone. It, it appeals, it's human nature to want to hear a story. And like you said, root for someone. And I thought particularly interesting what you just said. It's, you don't necessarily remember the specifics, but you remember how you felt when you were listening to the story. So can you outline the various elements of a story that make storytelling so particularly compelling? I, I think of three basic elements. Uh, each begins with a, a C word, conflict, characters, context. Uh, conflict in, air, in, in stories, again, it's ancient. Human against human, human against nature, human against machine, human against self. Uh, as a business story, it's the struggle to exist and grow, uh, the struggle of discovering a need, struggle of to solve a problem, the struggles of testing, targeting, putting together a team. Uh, some kind of conflict is the plot of the story. And as we know about a plot, we like surprise. You know, we don't like some sort of live climax. Uh, the next C word, characters, the audience should care about the characters, but whether villains <laughs> or good guys. Uh, and, and an inventor may be the lead character, uh, but there are teammates or customers or family and other allies. Uh, in a play, that's your cast. The third C is context, and by that I mean the setting, time, the attitude. Uh, things don't happen in a vacuum. So when you tell a story, you describe time, place, give it perspective and depth, uh, give us a situation or a world that we can imagine. And when you tell a story that has an interesting conflict, characters and context, you're often surprised by how many new people it reaches in our age of global media. Uh, my son and I wrote a novel for children, Nicholas Claus, story of young Santa, an origin story of Santa Claus. And I was surprised to get an email out of the blue from a music composer in Norway, who mm -hmm. also has composed music for Broadway, asking for the rights for his creative team to turn it into a musical. Now they hope to raise funds to make it a movie. So you never know how your stories may circulate to other people. So, I mean, what kind of stories should inventors and innovators, many of whom are on the call with us tonight, what, what kind of stories are particularly compelling for them to tell about either their business or their product? There's tons of different types of stories. You've kind of covered that so, so far. What would be your advice to them as far as the types of stories that would move the needle for their product or business? Well, I think for business, I think there are three basic stories, personal, the product and the business, those are the basic ones. Uh, I, I, it might be easier to remember those, these three terms, adventure, ad, adventure. Personal adventure, the product, ad, and the business venture. The adventure for the in, inventor or innovator is, is usually a personal discovery story, discovery of a customer need, Mm -hmm. uh, figuring out the solutions, the, the, the testing and early struggles uh, development. The ad, as in advertising, is the product or service success story. What reveals your benefits, advantages, 
and trustworthiness. Uh, venture is your business story. Uh, how are you going to structure, market, and scale? Are you hoping to license rights? Uh, what do you aspire to achieve ultimately? Uh, in a speech or presentation, you often tell these stories in combination, the personal product and venture. There's a synergy and momentum when you are able to do that. I remember speech writing and coaching for the top executives of a major corporation for their world sales meeting you know, for an audience of some 900 sales representatives and working with eight speakers privately to write. I remember one in particular, not the CEO or the more, one of the more powerful executives, but one who was a low profile executive. And he cared more about the opportunity. He was anxious, uh, but he really wanted to connect with the audience and excite them about his plans. Uh, so I drew out of him stories and insights that uh, enabled me to give him a script that uh, he believed in, and it gave him confidence. Uh, and so I remember the, the day of the speeches, and the other executives were all very happy with, with the, the, how they performed and the audience reaction. But this low-profile guy was surprise star of the day. And, you know, he delivered with passion. Mm -hmm. he, he told the stories with great sincerity. And the standing ovation for him was so heartfelt. And his reputation changed with, within the company. Uh, oh, wow. He was no longer low profile. He was a genuine leader. Oh, uh, that's a great story. That's a great story. Um, so what, I mean, you've mentioned a few t different times, Todd, the the power of storytelling for, you know, a, a corporation, a business, an mm -hmm. organization and telling its story. But how about if you're just telling the story of a product, right. how is product marketing particularly well suited for storytelling? Well, there's a great need there, obviously, with a new product comes understandable skepticism. Uh, mm -hmm. Does it really work as claimed? Is it worth even researching to check it out? Is it a smart investment or a risky proposition? Trust is the main question. Why trust the words of a self-interested promoter? Uh, true stories of proven success are usually the most persuasive. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's the colorful details that really are most convincing and memorable. But the primary need for stories and pitching and marketing products is that they are usually just new, improved material objects rather than a basic, unarguable necessity. So getting a sense of the humans behind the product, their mission and meaning uh, makes us care enough about the product that we go out of our way to consider researching, if not quickly purchasing it. And that's true about attracting investors too. Uh, they need to believe in the product, the people and the venture strategy. So true stories can have that persuasive power because stories have can have more credibility than mere claims. That's why a new story will have more impact than a new ad. I, 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 I mean, it's, it's indisputable. Like a perfect example I just thought of was, I don't know if anybody on this seminar is has watched uh, Breakpoint or Full Swing. There are products, products, the sports that their organizing bodies are trying to tell through a story, and they've become so much more personal. You know, these these shows, you get to know the athletes. You get, and I find myself watching tennis and golf a lot. I only I used to only watch football, but now I watch all three because I I feel like I. I'm part of their story, their life story now. And so it, I I can see this applying not just to a product, but well, if you consider a sport a product, and it sort of is because they're trying to sell the sport, then it, it, it works perfectly in terms of giving somebody a sense of attachment. Like you said, you're Absolutely. rooting for that person. It, um, it, it gives a real meaning. It I, gives I, a real meaning. I, 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 I don't know, I guess I saw it on the internet, some story or heard it from, about this jam 
like jam that you eat, toast and jam, <laughs> that, that I uh, liked a brand. And I heard, oh, it was the founders go back to helping save Jews in the Holocaust. And I thought, oh, okay. oh my gosh, I've got, first of all, I love the jam. And I don't, I'm not even going to look at the price point or anything. I don't care. I'm going to support people who did this good thing. And then I find out with a little research that there was maybe no foundation to that story. Some anecdote I think somebody put online and then it goes like crazy. And then it goes, so I'm not saying anything to denigrate the brand, you know, so I don't, I don't name it, but, uh, but it, it does still in a negative way show the power of story that we mm -hmm. want to believe that there's more than just the product. And just a thing. There's a person behind the thing. Yes. A bombus is another example, right? The, the sock. Where yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, but, but that's legit. So, that's a legit story. That's legit. Yeah. Well, you feel like, okay, yes, I'll, I'll pay a little more if that helps other people. Because I think most people have a good heart. Do you feel like this is more important these days in the age of social media the stories because everybody's much more interconnected than they used to be than, say, I don't know, back, back in the 50s and 60s where you just had a, you know, major newspapers and you had the TV and people were more sort of disconnected. Is the story more important now? Well, it, it, I think, it, first of all, it's more effective because just in terms of the improvement, in terms of editing, and special effects and all things, what drones can make possible, all kinds mm -hmm. of things make mm -hmm. it, you know, higher impact. But I think that the story, stories are more motivational um, because frankly, the people making them know how to touch you more mm -hmm. effectively. But I also think, and this might be my bias because I happen to think my children's generation and their children's generation are, are the best <laughs> and are really uh, so good hearted that uh, they consider definitely a part of business that the mission should be more than just profit. And uh, I think so. You know, so there's a bigger market for right. mission people driven products. People expect it now, whereas maybe they didn't before. Uh, I think, right. Unless it's, you know, some basic commodities where they are not going to bother and they'll, then they can differentiate. But with so many of these products, the differences between them are so small, if there mm -hmm. is any difference really, that, you, you, you know, one that has a story that appeals to you versus one that doesn't you're naturally inclined to think, yeah, there's some extra reason to make that purchase. Sure, sure. I, I, I want to dig into one other thing that we, we talked about a moment ago with the gentleman who, who kind of became a star at this this corporate event. Mm -hmm. right. um, you, you, you've said to me in the past, you know, Alexa, a good story is motivational for the teller of the story, That's not right. just the audience of that story. So what do you, can, you, can, we, can you elaborate a little bit yeah. more? Well, to be convincing, you must be able to speak with conviction. And in order to have conviction, uh, you must believe in what you're saying, obviously. So unless you're a professional actor, and even the greatest actors are so immersed in their characters that they really are feeling the convictions of what the yes. script tells them to say. But in business storytelling, uh, you must believe not only that what you're saying is true, but convinced of its accuracy, its relevance, its lessons. And so a, a story can be motivating to you in a, in a lot of different ways. It reminds you of your own mission in the success you've already achieved. It can inspire you to continue to be visionary, determined, optimistic. But, and we sometimes think we know story because we lived it. Therefore, we can just tell the story. But experiencing something doesn't necessarily mean we understand it fully. For one thing, we might not fully understand how an audience perceives what you're telling them. Friends and family may give you encouragement. Uh, if it means humoring you, encouraging. So they may not be the best sounding board. So it's important not to be so emotionally invested in your story and the way you tell it that you misinterpret how people react to it. Now, on the flip side, you shouldn't change the truth of your story to impress people. Being an inventor doesn't mean inventing stories. Being an innovator doesn't mean improving 
stories by changing facts. Uh, for your stories to be motivational to you, you need to be true to the integrity of the story. Now, maybe the best way to test that integrity is to imagine your story reported verbatim on the front page of your local newspaper. Would it withstand the scrutiny of all mm -hmm. readers, including mm -hmm. those who are familiar with the actual story? And a business story shouldn't just be motivational for the teller and the audience, uh, but for others on your team, employees, subcontractors, investors, and other allies. Uh, that's why storytelling is more important than how we think of it from the entertainment world. And that's why figuring out your stories should be a very early exercise in figuring out your brand and strategy. You know, many early stage ventures go through group exercises about cobbling together their mission statement, which is usually cobbling together of cliches and buzzwords. Yeah. Uh, I recently talked with a, a very successful founder of a tech company who told me he didn't have much faith in the writing talent of his marketing people. So they used AI to write their mission statement. And he thought it seemed okay. Uh, I read it and had a different impression. I, uh, it, it was the kind of bland generalities and uh, jargon that didn't distinguish his company at all. It could have been the mission statement for any early stage company almost. But so figuring out your story can be a clarifying exercise. It makes you think of what you're really all about and what you aspire to be. And should not be a committee effort. Um, story comes from one mind, even if it's an experience involving many people. Certainly stories can be improved with editing by others, mm -hmm. but as with invention, ideas originate from one person responding to a question that inspires many stories. What if? So does it matter what the medium of communication is for a story to be effective. Like if you're telling a story for a website versus a video versus an oral pitch to maybe venture capitalists for your product or a social media video, like I, I have to imagine it does, but can you kind of tell us a little bit more about, you know, kind of broadly speaking, how it, how it breaks out amongst those media? Well, as you know, every medium has its own capabilities and limitations. Uh, so if, if it's a video for social media, for example, and you want people to share it, it should be relatively short, maybe a minute. You know, mm -hmm. but if it's a, if it's a uh, video for your website, where people or visitors are already interested in you and want to learn more, then maybe it could be three minutes or something. So it depends on the media. It, it's similar to deciding whether to phone or email or text someone. You know, what do you need to say to that yeah. person? It's also a question of message strategy. Is it visual or verbal storytelling? Um, in addition to strengths and suitability of a particular medium, you have to consider whether it's cost effective. What can you afford? And will it reach your targeted prospects? Uh, for early stage investors, there's usually not a, inventors, there's usually not enough capital to advertise. There right. might be capital for test targeting, to prove a market, or maybe generate publicity and buzz by being provocative, clever, funny, controversial. A lot of marketing is uh, repetition, uh, incrementally branding over time. But inventors and early stage entrepreneurs usually don't have that kind of budget. So in me brainstorming media options, you have to consider your audience, the message, the money, the purpose, and the results you feel you need to achieve. Uh, so it's, it's within those parameters that you select your best medium for a story. But whatever medium you choose, you should view it as a unique opportunity. When you have limited resources, mistake to just cut and paste your message into whatever medium mm -mm. you select, right? Be creative in optimizing what that medium enables you to do. 
You might not create a video that goes viral. That depends on fluky things. But you can make a video so appealing, your own supporters enthusiastically share it. And in a video, too, music can make or break the story. A, a friend of mine in, in Boston is, uh, teaches music, uh, but also composes modern classical music. And he's just sent me the trailer for a coming documentary with the music he composed, produced and directed it with an orchestra, the studio editing, everything. It was so moving. It really makes you want to see the documentary. Now, if you imagine your story with music, what kind of music would it be? Your answer might help you better envision how to tell your story. Oh, okay. So that that's actually a perfect segue into what I was going to ask you next. Like a lot of people aren't great at storytelling. A lot of inventors are not great at storytelling, but they know how to make stuff, but they don't know how to really relate to others well enough to convey what's particularly exciting or or important about about their product. So how does an inventor or innovator, whether he or she is good or not good at conceiving of a story, how does she, how does she start? What are the steps involved? You kind of hit on a little bit. Like I, I love that example of like maybe listening to music and seeing how that inspires you, but is there scripting? Is there testing? What kind of brainstorming? Well, as you know, there are many ways to that uh, a writer will attack the blank screen or blank page. And inspiration, though, comes to us unexpectedly. Uh, we'll be driving or showering or walking or talking. We don't know. So in writing a story, there's no formula. Sometimes you start in the middle, the beginning, the end. Sometimes you just... As ideas occur to you, or you write notes and put them away and then try to shuffle them together into something that seems like a good storyline. In business, though, there is a more focused frame of mind. You're not making up something about an imaginary world um, with imaginary characters and fictional plot. You, you, you start with real-life people, real-life products. Still, you want a compelling story and a great telling of the story. So how to begin? Well, if you're not sure of the direction you, you want to go in, I'd, I'd suggest three different approaches. Journalistic, conversational, and creative. Each one can be a good exercise for your brainstorming. First, the journalistic approach. How would you report it as a news story? What are, the, what are your facts you want covered? Uh, who, what, when? where and how or why. Uh, and when you consider the facts that are newsworthy, what is the headline? What is the lead, the opening paragraph? What is your quote? What is, wh who are your sources? Now, if it's a print story, the ending doesn't matter as much. It kind of peters out. <laughs> it, if it's a TV news story, usually has kind of a boffo ending. Uh, it, it, uh, but treating it as a news story, uh, what facts are interesting? What are extraneous? It helps you figure that out. And don't worry about brevity. Um, write however long a story that you'd like to see reported to the world. Um, what are your claims, credentials, aspirations, principles? Writing a story in this way makes you view it more objectively. Now, the second approach, I'd say, is conversational. How would you tell the story if you met someone new at a cocktail party who seemed interested and wanted to learn more about what you were up to? Well, this would not be the same as making a pitch presentation, obviously. You know, no jargon. This is just no PowerPoint with a deck of slides. You know, it's conversational. Uh, so how do you tell a story as an exciting anecdote or a very short story? A third approach is the creative. You, you know your factual news story, you know your conversational story. Are you ready to brainstorm how you could tell stories in very imaginative ways? You know the journey you've been on. Where can you imagine going? Put yourself in the mind of prospects who know nothing about you or question your assumptions. 
do a little time travel and think as your future self. Let's say you lived up to what you dared to dream. How should you tell that story now? Uh, I hope my friend Steve Sweeney has joined us. He said he wanted to be a part of this. Steve is known as Boston's King of Comedy. And I remember um, urging him and, and Colin Quinn, who's also another great comedian, urged him as well to take these jokes and stories he's told us at different times when we're out golfing or wherever, uh, to put it in, a, to do a one man show, kind of a life and times of Steve Sweeney or whatever. And he finally went along with that and did it. And he'd go off to the library and write his jokes, occasionally test them out. Um, with his regular stand-up, he'd test out pieces of it. And then he put it together in a one-man show called Townie. And it was just fantastic. And occasionally he still performs it. So if you have a chance to see it, you should see it. Just like Colin Quinn does his one-man shows, you see it on HBO yeah. or whatever. But he put together his stories with an arc of a whole story to where at the end, a very poignant and yet hilarious way, it, it all wraps up as a happy ending. And uh, that is again, a good example of a creative approach. So I put you on the spot and ask you, if you had a regular old consumer product, which one would you advise, which one of those three approaches would you advise a client to, to take? Let's say it's a housewares product or something. Well, I think the order I said it is kind of good. Because starting with the journalistic approach where you answer the factual questions, who, what, why, when, where, how, it kind of gets you started and it's kind of easier, frankly. Mm -hmm. And and you think, okay, is that newsworthy? That's good. Oh, this little detail we should work in because people find it very clever and whatever. Let's let's make up a quote that would go in it just like in a news story. You know, it it it's it's something very doable. It's not something you tend to put off because it's so daunting True. to think about. Facts are the facts. That's right. Then the conversational approach sounds easier, <laughs> but but sometimes distilling it down to what you'd say mm -hmm. in conversation can be even harder, as you know. Mm -hmm. The uh, elevator but, pitch. That's right. But even then, but if it's a different thing where you're really doing it in conversation, an elevator pitch, you're really pitching. Whereas a conversation, you're not going to be as blunt and in your mm -hmm. face about, okay, this is the blah, blah, blah. This is why you should really consider investing. So, you know, it, it's more pulling them in and still more indirect. The creative approach is what then takes time. Hopefully they've made progress with the first two exercises to where they feel like, okay, now let's really be, be, be creative. We have this big opportunity, for example, maybe doing a, a podcast or, or whatever, doing a video or somebody else wants us to, to buy a billboard or something, I don't know, whatever the opportunity. And then they're saying, okay, let's make the most of this. Yeah. You know, let's not just, like I said, cut and paste and put our slogan in there and blah, 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 yeah. our logo. And let's really do something that people will talk about yes. and, uh, and move them. And that's the way you move the needle. When you really have persuasion from a creative story. Well, that makes sense. Um, I was just thinking about my own journey and like how I wish I had done what you just said, because I wasn't sure of how to conceive of how to tell the story, but that would have been very helpful to, to, to have that kind of exercise where you, I start with the concrete facts and then go to a condensed version and then create a story. Um, what are the common mistakes that an inventor or an innovator should, should avoid with, with well, storytelling? Well, you, you remind me of one of them with what you just said, which is that not being as inventive or innovative in telling your story as you are in your work. Mm -hmm. You have to realize, okay, that is part of your work. And while I think people make a mistake, think, well, this is just brand marketing or whatever, they think in contrived ways. They think repetition will save them. They think, you know, maybe the colors of the logo will do the trick or whatever. And they're not doing the harder work of thinking of a story that really pulls people in where they, where you, where it, yes, it appeals to their self-interest, but maybe more subtly, more evocatively, and um, and to, and to realize that their story, it, 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 
while they're used to it and while they're totally immersed in that world, they might not think it's all that exciting. But as I said earlier, people aren't finding inventors intriguing the whole thing and and they're rooting for them. They are the underdog. So uh, it, it's it, it's worth it to not, because another mistake is to think in terms of, let's say you're making a pitch presentation or whatever, thinking in a dispassionate, linear logic kind of way, mm -hmm. as opposed to the creative story. Uh, another mistake is using jargon, euphemisms, buzzwords, when more evocative words are available. Um, another mistake is sounding boastful when humility would be more appealing. And Sometimes it's a mistake when feigning humility, when confidence would be more appealing. Well, so when you tell a story, you're going to almost naturally be humble because you're just relaying a story versus... A, a lot of times, yes. And, and you can do it. And even then, it, it, it's, it doesn't have to be a humble brag, as it's called. But sometimes people realize when you're talking about your failures, for example, yeah. that's yeah. more persuasive than, oh, I can trust this person. They're not yeah. giving me some song and dance. They're really talking about this struggle they're on and I want them to succeed. You know, I'm rooting for, well, maybe I can help, whatever. So, uh, and, and finally, the, the, a common mistake, of course, is the failure to spend the time, not just conceiving and writing your stories, but rehearsing delivery. Sure. I, I know that we, we, I want to save some time for question and answers at the end. I know our audience has some, but I, I do want to ask, um, we get to the next couple of questions, but real quick before I do that, I think a struggle that a lot of inventors have, including myself, is how personal do you get with the story? How you don't want to seem some like some kind of crazy, wacky inventor who's kind of being overly personal and overly familiar, but you want to avoid the mistake that you just talked about, Todd, in, in being dispassionate and and not and being too sort of rigid and robotic and business-like. So do you have any advice for how people can sort of toe that line, inventors and, and, and innovators in particular? Well, again, it depends not only on the audience, for example, prospective investors versus someone who, you know, you're trying to talk into becoming a teammate, yeah. um, but also the medium. For example, like I mentioned Shark Tank. Sure. Yeah. How, many of those, how many of those people end up crying at some point when they talk yeah. about their struggles? Yeah. You know, yes. And now that's good television. And frankly, sure. um, it's in the editing. You know, they, they're there talking for longer than the eight minutes or whatever they show. But of course the producers and editors, they're picking the part where they get emotional and you know and then they show their their sharks all being empathetic or what you know so yes, so, yes, so yes. It, right it depends so if all of a sudden you were on, on a podcast for example uh and and you're getting all into something that makes sound like self-pity or something that would would not go over well you know it, it depends yeah. so um but if you want that's why i say it start it, it's good to start with the factual news kind of story because that you know is it uh will tell you wait a minute the this fact in and of itself is potent enough i don't need to color it and tell them how i'm feeling a story well told will make them feel without it seeming obvious that you're deliberately trying to lead them into feeling emotion be authentic right? about it in right. and this is and this is why music is often so powerful so if you have music for example in that you can say something that's fairly dry that but with the right music people will be choking up mm -hmm. because the music is what does it to them sure. you know? so sure. it depends on the medium depends on the audience depends on the message depends on the messenger uh so i, I just what, what i'd get back to is just as i say to consider every uh, medium you'd select a unique opportunity realize that that's the challenge you face the uniqueness you're unique product is unique the market the audience is unique all this so coming up with a story that's unique uh is part of the challenge and so it's not like oh okay here's here's the formula 
here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. It depends on all those things. And you have to think clearly. And this is why I said a lot of times a family or friends might not be the best sounding board, right? Because they want to encourage you. But somebody who can't, who is more detached and be able to say, okay, that detail that you just mentioned, that phrase you just mentioned, that's really good. That really, let's let's use that. Oh, oh, really? I didn't even think about it. So uh, it's just, it, it's it, the challenge is to be uniquely creative, not just creative. All right, we're at 7.50 almost. I wanna save time, but final sort of advice as far as storytelling for inventors in particular, innovators in particular, entrepreneurs looking to craft or even improve on an existing story? Well, you have to make time. And a lot of people don't have it as a high priority. I've got this and that, and, and they and they don't make time for it in part because they're not comfortable doing it. They're, they're a little afraid that, the, that they're not ready. That yeah. the news is not speaking to them. So you have to make time for brainstorming ideas and language. Uh, don't wait until the night before you have to make a pitch presentation or do a, some kind of media interview or write ad copy or whatever. Make sure the stories are consistent with, if not reinforcing, your strategy. Make sure the stories are meaningful to you. And, and, and finally, I, I just quote the greatest storyteller in American history, Mark Twain, when he said, always do right. This will gratify some people and astonish the rest. Excellent. Perfect way to sum it up. Thank you, Todd. I'm going to turn it over to George so that he can ask questions from our audience. I'm sure there are a number of them. Yes, there okay. are. Todd, uh, thank you very much, Lexa. Great job as usual. Uh, I thank you. We're going to jump right into the first one here. Some, Todd, uh, I must say, and Lexa, um, you answered of some of the questions already that were asked here, which was great. So um, the first one, what is something a business or brand could learn from a political campaign in terms yeah. of storytelling slash marketing? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, for have, Caitlin, for that question. Yes, since mm -hmm. I have a... <laughs> well, the big, big difference is that in campaigns, you know it's all about persuasion. Your every decision is about persuasion because you know you need a majority to win or a plurality. So in business, you could say, hey, we got one and a half percent of the market. That's fantastic. If we could get it up to 1.9 percent, we'd be gold, you know, whatever. It's, so with a campaign, uh, there's, there's more pressure to have a potent message. So in the storytelling, of course, uh, it gets very personal. It's, it's about the candidate. Uh, and I'm afraid that one of the bad things about politics is how it's become more and more personal in negative ways, getting into opposition research, which I won't get into. <laughs> but uh, some of the skills of politics, um, it, it helps you uh, brainstorm under pressure. It helps you in terms of uh, realizing that a candidate or a business leader had better be prepped well before any interview and to be very sensitive to anything you say might be used against you. It's like Cardinal Richelieu once said, give me six lines by, written by the most honest of men and I will find something in there to hang him. <laughs> That's much more of a political perspective than business. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, you, you learn a lot about how to be succinct and how to generate free publicity. And so inventors and innovators, early stage entrepreneurs, can learn a lot, particularly from challenger campaigns. Because challenger campaigns create something out of nothing, as opposed to incumbents who have all the resources of you know the establishment. So realizing that ideas and stories have real power can move people to believe in that helps motivate you to be more creative uh, as an entrepreneur. Okay. Great, thank you for that. Um, the next one, I feel that I have a great story. What do I do next to get the story out there? And I guess, um, you know, from, from Donna Lee is, 
you know, where, where do they begin? Where do they begin? I know you touched on a little bit, but. Um... Well, one, one of the things I mentioned is, is, is about being, put yourself in the minds of the audience, your intended targeted audience, right? Uh, and to understand the strengths and limitations of a medium, you know, what would work best. But then also I would urge you in that case, if you're talking about generating publicity and buzz, is to think about from the point of view of the reporter, producer, editor, columnist, uh, podcaster, whoever, whoever it is that you're turning to, to ask for attention and think from their point of view what they want. I think H.L. Mencken said there are three things Americans never tire of. Novelty, novelty, novelty. And that's what you're thinking about with the story. How can I put out a story that will provoke people to think or laugh that editors and columnists say, hey, there's something new. Because you have, with, with, the, with the proliferation of media, you have so many people who need content. We hear this all the time. Uh, but they particularly need new kinds of stories, okay? And so you, you have to think in terms, from their point of view, what is it, what, what will they think of what you give them? If you have a, uh, a news release, if you have a press advisory, if you're making a phone call to pitch a story, if you're texting, if you're emailing, if you're preparing, prepping somebody who you know to make the connection for you, how do they introduce you? Think about what they're looking for. And and it and it depends on the medium. I mean, a columnist, you know, can write a longer story. If somebody's just doing a, a radio news story, they're looking for like a, a 40 second story. Um, if you're looking to, to be interviewed on television, think about what news show or, or talk show you're looking at as far as what's the format? How can I get in? How do I use visuals to get their attention? How do I use humor to get their attention? So um, it's a challenge. I I, I uh, done a lot of pre PR things to provoke controversy and to get attention. And it, it you 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 have to think about many things, including what the hell are you trying to accomplish? Are you just you know are you really trying to tell a story? Are you just trying to uh, uh, you know play with the minds of competitors? <laughs> whatever there's all sorts of things um so you you need to think it through you need to think strategically and tactically and um that's a, a whole long <laughs> that's a whole long presentation i have to make about pr i guess but uh w one other when, when do you know length of time if you're story you're telling you're just not getting to people is it the first 15 seconds is it uh i'm paraphrasing a question here about when do you know if you just not just fell on your face or it's not working length of time you take too long what is it well uh, uh, again i don't it depends on the person you're talking to and the, and the circumstance um it depends i mean if for example you're pitching for investment and you're talking to somebody who might act like they're interested in investing, but they don't have any money, <laughs> then how they react doesn't matter, right? Because they're they're not a good prospect for you anyway. Uh, so you shouldn't be so hard on yourself and thinking, geez, this person I uh, told all about it wasn't excited. Well, many people won't be excited. You don't need that many people to be excited, frankly. Um, so um, if, if you believe in, your product or service or new venture, um, then realize that a lot of times it's a numbers game. You've got to talk to a lot of people. So don't give up with a few rejections. I mean, that's true, obviously, of salespeople in particular. So you don't give up. You just realize, okay, another person not interested, go on to the next. But it's good to then think about, wait a minute, something I said there enticed that person to be more interested or something I said there you know, helped extend our conversation and to improve your story, to improve the way you're pitching. So it's not a matter of time, I think, so much as uh, you usually just understanding who it is you're, you're pitching. 
Um, one of the things that you, um, another question here that you actually had a good uh, answer for going in. As a video professional, my clients often tell me that they don't know how to begin telling their stories. What right. advice would you offer someone on this workshop on how to begin telling their stories? You touched on it a little bit in there. Right. Um, I think it's, well, a, it's, it's yeah. another good part of it because inventors know how to invent. Right. But um, that's where we get stuck sometimes. Well, a lot of times, if, if, if you do have a professional the videographer or the video editor, um, you will, I, I mean, I've interviewed people uh, for long periods of time sometime in order to, to get out of them some usable sound bites. So I'll be interviewing them and they'll be rambling on and on. And I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, that's, not hearing anything yet is usable that I can turn that I could put into a video script. But then I'll hear something and I'll think, okay, I can cut that into the sentence and put his next statement, cut, edit, put a visual to cover the edit and go on. So I'm a big believer in with those people of interviewing them, letting them tell reminisce, letting them tell their stories, let them let them ramble. And a lot of times people are uncomfortable with the lights and the camera. And so they're, you know, they're not very lucid in many cases. They're not very articulate under pressure. So you got to give them more time. It's comfortable. Oh, we're just kind of having a conversation. And so mm -hmm. uh, so in that way, you're learning though, hey, here's a nugget I could use, here's a thing. And some people, um, you are just not going to be good in delivery, no matter what. You can coach all you want. I've coached all kinds of people and, and you know, feel good about progress in many cases, surprising progress in a lot of cases. Um, but some people uh, just don't have the stomach, frankly, for it. You know, it's just too nerve wracking for them and they freeze up or whatever. So I think the best way to uh, get stories out of people is to be very patient. And, and also, like when you, you get a oral history from a parent or a grandparent, if you're smart enough to do that, because you'll cherish what you have, um, you know, you start off with simple factual questions that get them into the rhythm of things, and then they will elaborate more. Then they'll feel freer to be expressing feelings, not just answering your questions with, with facts. Excellent. I'm going to take a, a, a moment here to uh, once again introduce um, Chris Donovan, our Director of uh, Strategic Development for New England Invents. He has another little housekeeping item uh, for those people who may or may not know. And we have a great story, thanks to some assistance that Todd gave us to tell our story about New England Invents. I'm going to give Chris the floor here to talk about some uh, partnership opportunities as we grow out New England events. Chris, uh, you have the floor, my friend. Thanks, George. Todd, as usual, fabulous job tonight. Thank you. I mean, the content you shared this evening on storytelling, uh, things you've shared with me over the years are always very valuable and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So again, just to as a reminder, the mission of New England Events is to promote, educate, and support independent inventors and innovators. And what I'm looking for and what George is looking for in, in, in Lexer, we're looking for individuals, companies or corporations, or foundations, anybody that shares the mission, understands the value that we're trying to create and we are creating, and, and we'd love to talk to them. Anybody that shares that mission, shares that value, and would be interested in par partnering with New England Events, I'm all ears, so to speak. And please contact me at Chris Donovan or Chris at NewEnglandEvents.org. And we appreciate having a good conversation. Thank you. Todd, we, we, we want to make sure that um you uh, i'm sure you're going to be hearing from a lot of people um a website that we can share with people we want to put it into the chat or at least get it recorded here because we're going to be playing this back so where can uh uh where would you like people to um you know view your website sure see what it, you it, do 
Yeah. Very easy. My name, toddomke.com. That's Todd, T-O-D-D, -D, last name D-O-M-K-E.com. And uh, contact information and my background and services and all that, testimonials, including one from Chris. <laughs> it's all there in Alexa. Yes. 